then it's Altson in third place. Mensel is now down into fourth in the second of the factory BMWs. Then we've got Ivan Muller in fifth place. And Jörg van Orman and Joachim Winkelock were battling for sixth place here in the sprint race here at La. Down they come into the stadium section. Problems for Philip Peter in the Audi Quattro after his incident with the Alfa Romeo of Christian Danner. They take this left-hander, then pass the pitch wall and up to the start and finish line to complete yet another lap. We're on lap 10 of the 15-lap race here at Lara in the sprint race, and it's still Giacotto who leads the way from Aiello, from Altson, then comes Muller in the first of the two-wheel drive Audis, then Van Omen, then we have the third BMW of Giacotto. You can join us for the conclusion of the race after the break. countries, 36 tracks, and 40 different race cars. And how realistic is Grand Tour racing? Let's just say, be careful. Next week on Speed Vision. On Motor and Monday, the Speed Vision Cup takes on Pike Peak. On Two Wheel Tuesday, Carl Fogarty has moved within two points of leader John Krasinski. On Wednesday, on Water, competition offshore action from Benicia Bay, California. On Thursday, live IRL qualifying from Las Vegas. And on Full Speed Friday, live coverage of the SCCA Valvoline Runoff, day one of three. Speed Vision, next week. Catch it if you can. Welcome back to Speed Vision. We're at Lahr in southern Germany for the penultimate round of the German Super Touring Car Cup. And what a race this sprint race is turning out to be. It's still Giacotto and Aiello up front, but there's now a big gap back to third place, and that belongs to Uwe Altson. He's moved past Christian Menzel, grabbed that third place, all important for Opel, as they regain their composure after starting so late this season. We come into the tight, tight right-hander, over that bump onto the runway, and it's still Giacotto who leads the way. Problems then for Philip Peter back in the pits. Obvious retirement for him in the Audi Quattro. But it's still Giacotto and Aiello who have the battle. Behind these two, we've got the battle between Alton. We've managed to pull out a few yards on Mensel. Then comes Muller, then Van Omen. And we're looking out the back of Ivan Muller's Audi to see Van Omen behind us. You can see how close they get to the pit wall as they come in for this tight apex left and up across the start and finish line. And Binkelock really is driving a stormer. He's now into seventh place behind Van Omen in the BMW. He's pulled up two places, but this is a very, very fast group. A group that's led by Johnny Giacotto from Lawrence Aiello. And as we get into the closing laps, Aiello is becoming ever more frantic to try and get past the works BMW driver and take maximum points here in the sprint race. The final corners then of the final lap of this 15 lap sprint race and Aiello is getting ever, ever closer to Giacotto. He pulls out to try and get up alongside him. There's obviously more power in the Peugeot. Giacotto jinks across. He'll take the inside line for what is the most difficult corner on the circuit here at last. Down through the gears they go, round this ever-tightening left-hander, then into second gear, across the bump, and back out into the stadium section. Giacotto it is who leads the way. Aiello will have to be content with second place. That won't have been his ideal, but second place is better than no points at all. He looks for the inside line as they come down to the final hairpin corner of the lap. Round the left, ignore the pit wall on the right, then along this short straight, and then the flat out left that leads to the checkered flag. It's going to be Chicotto's victory, a great one from pole position, that keeps Aiello in second place. A great drive then from the Venezuelan Formula Motorcycle champion in his BMW that totally thwarts Peugeot's hopes of securing the championship in this the first race. They glide to a gradual slowing down lap with Giacotto leading the way. The positions, Giacotto from Aiello, from Alton, Muller, Mensel and Van Orman. We talked to the Venezuelan about his victory. Yes, I was uh, watching for Laurent. He was uh, very quick but it was not a problem to control. All right, the car seemed to run beautifully. You should be pretty well set up for the second race then. Yeah, it looks okay. Maybe now we have to choose another type of tire for the race, for the main race, because I think with this it's a little bit at the limit. 
All that leaves the driver's points with Aiello and 604, Winglock 516, the difference 88 points. We talk to the Frenchman. I think we are uh, about the same as the BMW. Uh, so I think that for sure we will have to uh, control the tyres. And uh, then we will see, but uh, I have to control the race. And whilst Aiello is looking to control the race, others will be happy just to get back in it. Here one of the Audis being repaired in the 10 minute break between the two races. Our mid-race feature this week is Joe Winklock, the BMW driver, a man who's a real favourite with the crowds here in Germany. You can see why they call him Smoking Joe. So far, really I must say, I'm really satisfied with a good season. Was, I was more or less really successful, which I didn't expect this year. Problems for Joe at the early season Nürburgring race when he was black flagged whilst holding third place. You know, I was in a really good position and they, they showed me the, the black flag. So I lost at this time for sure 40, 45 points, which, is, which I need now in the championship, you know. But uh, okay, this race is gone and so far the whole team and also BMW that did a really good job. to drive a really different style, you know, very softly and gently because you should keep the speed during the corner for the straight and maybe this was also, I'm sure this was the problem for the for the people from the DTM or from the ITC car. Germany uh, about the motorsport changing a little bit and then it starts really when Schumacher was so successful in Formula One and uh, about this I'm really happy because when I start motorsport 79 it was really difficult you know for a young driver to get a little bit uh, support to get a sponsorship and today they do really a lot for the for the youngsters. So that then is Joe Winklock veteran of the BMW team and obviously a great great favorite with the fans currently lying in second place in the series frantic repairs here at Audi for the Philip Peter Audi Quattro he'll be looking to get back into the race after his incident earlier in the sprint race with Stefano Modena well the organizers have really managed to summon up a real festival atmosphere here at La near Freiburg and it's the first time that the series has been to this part of the country this weekend has seen some 38,000 spectators visit the German Super Touring Car Cup here at La, and it really has been a really excellent atmosphere. Well, we'll leave you to take the strains of the local band. We'll prepare for the main race. We'll be back with you for the break. If you're a real car enthusiast, you should be reading Auto Week every week. For true car lovers, once a month is not enough. Auto Week has the latest news because it's a weekly. You can stay up on top of everything. All the new models, concept cars, SUVs, even collector cars are in Auto Week every week. Auto Week will give you information on new models that really isn't available anywhere else. All the racing news and analysis you could ever want when it's still hot. I'm into going racing with my buddies, and Auto Week gives us information to talk about before it's old news. Anything with wheels, Auto Week has. Call 1-800-445-3800 for 52 weeks of Auto Week and get these three special issues free. Places, the ultimate shopping guide, and our complete racing fan guide with track maps, driver profiles, everything. All for just $24.95. Call 1-800-445-3800 now for Auto Week. If you only had time for one car magazine, Auto Week would be the one to read. Call now. Welcome back to Speed Vision. We're at La for the German Super Touring Car Cup. This is the 30-lap main race, and it is do-or-die time for Laurent Aiello. If he intends to secure this championship, it's this race in which he's got to do it. He fails miserably, though, because Chicotto is away yet again. And look at Menzel up from third place. Look at Winkelock on the left-hand side of the circuit. He's battling to get up front as well. I think he's got into fourth place. Quite remarkable from seven. Three places up there already. It's 
Gicotto who leads into the hairpin left at the end of the airfield section from Aiello. From Vinkelhoff then comes Van Ormen, who's got a battle between himself, Marco Werner, Ivan Muller and Ubi Altsen as they storm through the left-hander corner and back out onto this long, long, fast straight down towards the stadium section. BMW leads the way then. In this, the main race of the La Weekend, it is Chicotto from Menzel, from Aiello, from Vinkelhoff, from Van Ormen into this tight, tight left-hander they storm. And it's still the BMWs leading the way. Chicotto from Menzel, Aiello's gone wide, Winkelock is up into third. Brilliant stuff from the Schwabian driver. Great, great drive up from seventh at the start of this race, just three quarters of a lap ago. It's now a BMW, one, two, and three. Team orders are going to prevail, that's for sure. We've got Muller trying to get up alongside Van Ormen. He's up into fourth place, so he has also made Good starts here. We're at the end of the first lap. It's a BMW formation team. Giacotto leads the way across the line from Mensel, from Winkelock. Then comes Aiello. He'll be looking for a race win here to secure the championship. Muller and Van Ormen, Werner, and then the first of the Opals, that of Alson. Then the second, that of Reuter. And at the end of lap one, it is Giacotto from Mensel, from Winkelock. Then in fourth place, we've got Aiello, then comes Muller, then Van Ormen, and look at the clutch of cars behind them. Werner car, then Alsen, then Reuter, all battling for position. They are really going to be a strong force at the end of this 30-lap race, and if it's anything like the Zweibrücken race earlier in the year, tyres are going to come into the equation. It's not as hot as it was at Zweibrücken, but certainly at the end of 30 laps, the tyres are really going to have to work hard. Winkelock now up into second place, Great, great stuff for the championship, because if Winkelock could win this race, and say we have a problem with Aiello, we could have all to play for for the final races at the Nürburgring in a few weeks' time. Giacotto then from Winkelock, from Mensal, down into the stadium section they come, down through the gears, from fifth to fourth to third to second, Winkelock is sliding through into second place, trying to get away from Mensal, who's coming under increasing pressure from championship leader Aiello. And look just behind them, Muller in the two-wheel drive Audi. He's going exceptionally well as the flags fly from the 38,000 spectators we've got here at last. Through this very, very quick right-hander, right out to the other side of the very wide runway and onto the fastest part of the airfield section here at La. And Aiello is looking to get past Mensel to the left, to the right, any way he can do it. He's alongside him on the brakes. They're down into the chicane. The tyres are smoking. Aiello's got back into third place. He's now going after Winkelock to get that championship position. Aiello really has been the form all season. He's won seven races. He's had innumerable pole positions. This time, he's really got to go for it. The championship's on the line. He's got to get up past Winkelock and hopefully get that win that'll secure him the championship. They come down into this very tight left-hander again, down through the gears. Menzel's alongside him, brilliant understeering stuff. Can he hold the position? Across the bump he goes. Menzel is back in third. Brilliant driving from the young BMW driver. He scored his best qualifying position in third place. This really is a storming drive from BMW. And one wonders where the team orders are going to come into it. Now Aiello comes under pressure from Muller. Muller's going brilliantly. Oh, he spun, he spun. Has he caught it? Yes, he has. He's kept Van Ommen behind, but it looked very much as though there was contact between the Audi and the BMW there. No, it's the Van Ommen car that stormed past as they go across the start and finish line. Mensel then keeping Aiello at bay, watching the other two BMWs get further and further ahead and Aiello is going to be very, very frustrated now. He's got to look for a way past the young BMW driver if he's to make an impression on the two in front. This time he jinks wide to the right. Mensel comes across. He doesn't block him. He's just faster. Through the left-hander. You can see how hard Mensel's trying. Aiello's got up alongside. He's back into third place. Brilliant stuff. Now, can he get after Big Lock? Championship time has come. Aiello really has to go for it as he storms down the long back straight here at La. Up front, it's still Giacotto from Vinkelock. Vinkelock's got a few yards on the Peugeot driver, but we know how quick that Peugeot can be in a straight line. Down through the gears, round this tightening, tightening left-hander. You can see he's on three wheels there. Down into second, across the bump, back onto the main airfield. Mensel's getting ever closer. And here's a replay. Mensel outbreaks himself totally at that left-hander. That allowed Aiello pass. They're back down into the stadium section this time around. Aiello has maintained that third place. And look at the tension in the Bagazzi camp. 
BMW leading the way, they'll be happy about that, but not about the ILO being in third. They've seen this all too often this year. Iolo then gets that third position. He's got yards ahead of Mensel, then Van Orman, and then Alton. So the positions as we come to the end of lap two, the beginning of lap three, it's Bigelot this time who looks as though he's got it on Chicotto. Chicotto lets him pass. We've got a new leader. It couldn't be more exciting here at La, because now Vinkelok leads from Chicotto, from Aiello, from Mensel. Then comes the other Peugeot of Van Omen, and then Mensel. Join us here on Speed Vision for more of this fascinating race at La in the German Super Touring Car Cup. For the moment, though, it's Vinkelok who leads. Nice view. Yeah, it sure is. Want to race down the mountain? What? You and me, down the mountain. Why would I want to do that? Look, they tell me the Subaru can now corner your BMW. Come on. It'll be fun. In tests, an all-wheel drive Subaru outcornered a BMW 318i. Another reason we put all-wheel drive on every car we make. Isn't that? <laughs> Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. Are you wasting money on spoiled food? Then you need Euro Sealer, the amazing new sealer that creates an airtight seal that locks in freshness so food lasts longer. Simply slide Euro Sealer along the edge of any bag and it's sealed airtight. It's that easy. Every time you open it, food tastes like it just came fresh from the store. Look, Euro Sealer creates a seal so airtight even water won't leak. Amazing! Euro Sealer keeps cereal crunchy, chips crisp, vegetables fresh, and deli meat delicious. One week later, Twist Thai salad is brown and slimy, but Euro Sealed salad is green and fresh. Now on this exclusive TV offer, you can get Euro Sealer for only $19.95. Call now and get Euro Can free. Euro Can leaves edges incredibly smooth. You can even reapply the lid. That's a $40 value, all for only $19.95. To order the Euro Sealer and receive the Euro Can absolutely free, have your credit card ready and call 1 800 715 3636. Don't delay, seal the deal and order today. Call now. Welcome back to Speed Vision. We're in the middle of a really fascinating race in the German Super Touring Car Cup, and Winkelock is leading. That puts him ahead of ILO in the championship points here at La. He's coming under increasing pressure, though, from his teammate, Johnny Ciccotto, and from Laurent Aiello, and indeed from Christian Menzel, who's really been a star in both qualifying for the race here at La and in the main race itself. He started out in second position, he's dropped to fourth, but that really doesn't show how hard the youngster has driven in the third of the factory BMWs. So, as we conclude yet another lap, it is Vinkelop this time, from Chicotto, from Aiello, and then Mensal. These four really have moved ahead of the rest of them, and as they get onto the very fastest part of the circuit, surely this time, Lawrence Aiello, will be looking to close the gap on Chicotto. Across the runway they come, down through the gears for Vinkelop, then for Chicotto. The car snakes violently under braking. This time, Aiello and Chicotto have made contact. Mensal's into second, Aiello into third. Will he get his way in front of his team? Uh, Chicotto really puts the power down. You don't see many super touring cars smoking as they leave from a standing start. But the anger is there for the Venezuelan. And look how far down the field he is. He must be in about eighth or ninth places now. He'll be looking to fight back up the field. But all of that has done Aiello's championship chances absolutely no good. And in replay, you can see how this time around, Aiello just went in far, far too late. Chicotto's the man who spins around. And watch when he applies the power and accelerates away again. You don't really see spinning tyres from these super touring car boys too many times from a standing start. Reaction there in the BMW pit, obviously not good. Ducato's well down the field now. He's got to start to fight back, but we've seen him win one race already here at La. Surely he can get it back up there and do something to get onto the podium once more. Muller then in fifth place now. Another man also doing an extremely good drive here at La in the two-wheel drive Audi. But all eyes are now on Laurent Aiello, the championship leader. He's made that problem for himself. He's got to get up through the field again and get back into the top three. It's still Big Lock who leads the way. Now from Mensal. Then comes Van Omen. Then comes Alton and Aiello. And in sixth place, it's Ivan Muller. Cotto then in seventh, then comes Werner, then comes Bartels in another of the Opals. But up front, relative stability for the moment. We've got Vinkelock who's leading the way. That'll do his championship chances absolutely an awful lot of good. Then comes the second BMW, 
Mentor, then Van Ommen, and then Uwe Altsen, another man who's done some sterling drives in the German Super Touring Car Cup this year. But surely he's going to come under pressure from Lawrence Aiello. And some really significant damage there to the front of the Peugeot 406. Let's hope it's not caused any internal problems to the radiator or any of the coolants that are right at the front of the car. But surely Aiello's got to make his way up past Alton, then past Van Ommen, and get back up to challenge the BMWs if he's to do his championship chances some good this weekend here at Laar. He was second in the sprint race. This time around, he's really got a battle on his hands. But his championship rival, Joe Binkelock, the man who we featured in our mid-race feature, is the man in the lead in this, the main race, over 30 laps at the Laar circuit. Aiello's really got to use the speed of the Peugeot as they come down to this extremely tight left-hander at the end of the airfield section. Looks as though Altson's outbraked himself. Aiello slips inside. He's got that fourth place back. Surely team orders will come into place because at front at the moment we've got Vinkelock, Menzel and then Aiello. Join us for more after the break. countries, 36 tracks, and 40 different race cars. And how realistic is Grand Tour racing? Let's just say, be careful. Two hundred and fifty bucks? It's only a little scratch. Here a scratch, there a scratch, everywhere a scratch, scratch. And they're all an eyesore. What you need is GS27 Scratch Remover. It's new from Duralube. GS27 gets rid of those surface scratches and paint swirls quickly and easily. Simply rub GS27 into the scratch, then polish it to a beautiful finish. The scratch is gone. I still can't believe it was that easy. GS27 got rid of those scratches in less than a minute. It's great. GS27 is not an abrasive. It's a super fine microscopic crystal light that works its way into the scratch and polishes it away. And look, you don't have to go crazy trying to match colors. That same tube of GS27 works wonders on any color car. You have to see it to believe it. Amazing. The repair shops that it had to sand, prime, and paint. What a bunch of bull. GS27 took that ugly scratch away in no time. Watch, would you do this to a brand new car? Ouch! But GS27 removes that ugly scratch quickly and easily. What a difference! GS27 is so effective, it'll even remove paint scrapes, ugly rust from chrome bumpers, and scratches and scrapes from your boat's gel coat. GS27 is only $14.95, but wait! Order now and get a second tube for only $5. That's two for just $19.95. It'll remove those surface scratches from your car or your money back. Don't live with those ugly scratches and don't spend a fortune to remove them. Order your GS27 scratch remover now. Call toll-free 1-800-798-8008 or send check or money order for $14.95 for one or $19.95 for two plus $5.95 shipping and handling to GS27, 1000 Apex Street, Department GS, Nashville, Tennessee. Or use your credit card and call 1-800-798-8008. Welcome back to Speed Vision. We're at Laar in southern Germany. This is lap 21 of the main race here in the German Super Touring Car Cup. And really, it couldn't be more fraught. Big lock it is who leads the way from his teammate Menzel. Aiello, though, has recovered from that earlier incident. He's now in third. Could it be second? Through the gears he goes, bashing his way past Menzel as they go round this hairpin alongside the pit wall. It is Aiello now in second place. Big lock, his only other contender for the championship, is in first. It is now battle joined between these two. Big lock it is who has come up from seventh place at the start grid. He now leads the race from Aiello superb drive from the BMW driver and certainly he is doing his championship chances an excellent amount of good as they come down this long long airfield straight down through the gears into the hairpin Aiello is almost up alongside him he'll be looking for the faster exit out of the corner this time around can he get past Binkelock the rear wheel drive car is slightly slower than the Peugeot as they go through the left hander and back down this long long straight here at the Lahr airfield. Now has Menzel got alongside Aiello. Could it be a BMW 1-2?
Binkelot moves across to take the slipstreaming effect and pull his teammate up in front of Aiello. Now Alpson's joined the party. Alpson goes third. Aiello is down to fourth. Look at Raffinelli, the Bigazzi team boss. He's overjoyed. This is some race for BMW. Out and back into the stadium section they come. It is Binkelot from Mensel, from Alpson, from Giacotto who's fourth. So three BMWs in the top four. Aiello's back down to fourth place. Now Mensel protecting his second place from Alpson as they go back round this hairpin to complete yet another lap here at last. And it is now three BMWs in the top four. Aiello is behind all of them. So from second to fourth in virtually two corners, Aiello saw his championship chances take a dive. Across the line they go, stream round this long, long right-hander out onto the very wide airfield section. It's Winkelock from Mensel, from Alton, a great drive from him in the Opal Vectra, and what a drive from Giacotto. He spun and was hit by Aiello at this corner a few laps back. This time, all the tyres are smoking. Alton goes second. Brilliant stuff from the Opal driver. Winkelock it is, who leads from Alton, from Giacotto and Mensel, then Aiello. Back out onto this long, long straight they go again. Now, can Aiello get up amongst the BMWs and get back into podium terms? Winkelock it is, who is leading the way. He could close on Aiello here and make the championship go all the way to the Nürburgring in a few weeks' time. And three factory BMWs in the top four. Quite unbelievable here at last. The man in pole position at the moment, though, the man going for maximum points is Winkelock. Then comes Alton, then comes Mensel, then Giacotto, who's recovered from seventh place to get back to fourth. Quite brilliant stuff. And look how close it is behind Aiello, Muller, Van Omen, all together. Giacotto's up into third. Mensel's been spun up by Aiello. More damage to the Peugeot. Great drama. And look at Raffinelli in the Bugatti pit. Not happy with that at all. Now, he's right down in 10th or 11th place, trying to recover. But what an end for Mensel. Now he's spun again, hit by Bartles. This time he must think his race really is at an end. The car's handling will be all over the place. But what a drive from the young BMW star. At the moment, as we have a look at it on replay, you can see how Aiello went for a position that just wasn't there. He spins Mensel out of the way. We are on board with Muller as he negotiates his way around this stranded BMW. And as we see it, see it again, plainly, that was Aiello's fault. Mensel was on the correct line. He was in front of the Frenchman, and that has done the Frenchman's chances absolutely no good at all. And of course, when Mensel gets going again, this time Bartles is alongside him. Have another spin there, Christian. You're now down into 11th place, and that is no just reward for the best drive of the year from Christian Mensel. Up front then, it is now Chicotto challenging Alton for second place. The Opal driver has really benefited from all the dramas that have been going on around him. A great drive from him this time around. He's now up into second place, just ahead of Johnny Giacotto. Then comes Aiello's very battered-looking Peugeot 406. And with all of the damage to the nose, I wonder how long it is before Aiello has a real problem with the cooling on his Peugeot. Giacotto then challenges Alton as we go into the last few laps. And here's a replay from Bartles. There's Christian Mentel's car going around us. He's, that is the second of his two spins. That's demoted him to 11th place and no real reward for the young German BMW driver. The drama, though, returns to the leading group. We've still got Winkelock out front, but look further back. There's the yellow car, the yellow Persia of Lawrence Aiello, and it looks as though he is losing some time. Christian Menzel, a great drive from him. He's out of the race after all those spins and demolition derby that we saw earlier on in the race. Up front, we've still got this leading group, but Aiello is dropping back, and that will do his championship chances no good whatsoever. For his main rival, Joe Winkelock currently leads the way in the factory BMW. Then comes Uwe Alpson, trying to retain that second place in the wake of Johnny Giacotto's charges. And he's the man really on a charge. He came up from seventh after that early incident with Aiello, when Aiello spun him around and caused some problems for him. But the Venezuelan is the man on form. He's won the sprint race. He's putting Alpson under great pressure. And this time, as they cross the start and finish line, it's Winkelock from Alpson, from Giacotto, from Aiello. Join us for more after the break. Gordon, right? Yes. Have you ever worked with anything high-tech? No. 
Thank you for the resume. But we're looking for someone with... More education. Some experience. Good luck to you. What you don't know can hurt you. So let ITT Tech help. Call 1-800-446-4130 for an informative brochure. That's 1-800-446-4130. Next. I'd always been into electronics. Like what you do? But I just thought there wasn't time. Do what you like. Then I thought, two years from now, I can still be hating my job. Or I could be graduating from ITT Tech. Yeah, I lose some sleep, but I don't get tired like I used to. You know, it just doesn't feel like work. Call 1-800-446-4130 for details. 1-800-446-4130. Welcome back to Speed Vision. We're at Laar in southern Germany for the penultimate round of the German Super Touring Car Cup. And what an explosive race it has been in so many different ways. The man in the yellow car, Laurent Aiello, is the championship leader. He is in fourth place. His championship contender, Joe Winkelock, is the man in the lead. If he can keep this, he will close on Aiello and take the race to the final couple of races at the Nürburgring in a few weeks' time. Winkelock then leads the way into this increasingly difficult and tightening left-hander. And here's a replay of the accident between Aiello and Mensel. Real problems then for Mensel. He got punted once. Consternation then in the BMW camp as they're looking for Mensel. There he is. He's alongside Michael Bartels. And as the others stream away for another lap, there's the other spin between Bartels and Mensel. That's finally put paid to the young BMW driver's chances. We're back live. Chicotto has got up alongside Altson. That's taken him into second place as they come across the start and finish line. And back comes ILO from the dead yet again. He's in fourth place, challenging for third. We know the power of the Peugeot on the long airfield straight. Can he get up alongside the Opel Vectra this time and pass him and get back into third? Problems there for Marco Werner. He's out of the race. Problems there for Van Ommen. He looks as though he's got a serious tyre problem. He's limping off and out of the race. But his teammate, Aiello, really is the man with the job to do here. We're in the closing laps of this main race here at Laar in near Freiburg in southern Germany. The first time we've been here. And what a cracker it has turned out to be. And there's the problem for Marco Werner. Shows how Hondas do not like the sand and gravel traps. He won't be out of there before the end of the race. And that's really put pay to what was a good drive from him. He was currently running in seventh. Now, Altson and Aiello. Can Aiello get past Altson this time around? They're onto this very fast left-hand straight down into the stadium section. Along they go. Altson takes the inside line. Aiello looks for a way round him. Is he going to punt him round? No. Altson gets past and away they go yet again. Winkelock still in the lead. Giacotto still second. Altson still third. Aiello still fourth and looking for a way past. The Audi flags are raving. They'll be looking for Ivan Muller. He's in fifth place at the moment in the two-wheel drive Audi. And what a star he's been so far in this race. So Winkelock it is who leads from Chicotto. Altson now pulling out a gap from Aiello. And some smoke problems there for the Frenchman in his brightly coloured Peugeot. Could that lead to some problems for him later on? We've only got a couple of laps to go and the drama just keeps on a-coming. Now Aiello's slowing a bit more dramatically. The order is Winkelock and Chicotto and Altson. You better join us for the drama here on Speed Vision or after the break. One magazine has captured America's love affair with automobiles better than any other, car and driver. And if you act now, you can get a full year subscription for only $14.97. Each month, Car and Driver brings you the inside story on what's hot and what's not in the automotive world. You'll get the first sneak previews of today's new cars, plus straight talk from the industry's most respected journalists. And no other magazine gives you more road tests than Car and Driver. 
Comparison and head-to-head -head testing that pulls no punches. Fitting car against car. From premier luxury vehicles to SUVs to affordable compact models. And if you call now, we'll include with your paid subscription this classic car and driver logo windbreaker. A guaranteed great look both on the road and off. Call 1-800-825-7581 right now to order a full year of car and driver for just $14.97. A savings of more than $25 over the newsstand price. Call now. Welcome back to Speed Vision and to a drama-laden German Super Touring Car Cup race here at La. We've got Winkelock and Ducato up front, but look here, here is the real drama. Laurent Aiello, the championship leader, looks to have a major problem. The bashes and bends that he did earlier on in the race probably have affected the cooling of this Peugeot 406. The radiator looks to be broken, and that will put pay to his chances. He'll now have to try and limp around and try and get some points, but even that looks to be a, a real problem. The car looks as though it's about ready to seize, there's all of the coolant looks to have disappeared from the engine and Aiello literally is cruising at this moment in time and dropping places as a result. Giacotto then and Winklock are the people who are going to benefit. Winklock will move ever closer to him. Jubilation in the big Gatsy BMW camp. It is a 1-2 on this last lap. Winklock it is, who nobody would have thought after four crashes in practice would have made and taken victory in this main race here at La near Freiburg in southern Germany. Who would have thought though that Winkelock would have taken the main race after four accidents in qualifying as he got to know this new La circuit? Who would have thought that Chicotto could recover from seventh after being hit by Aiello and get back up into second place? Who could have foreseen Alton getting into third? A great drive from the lead Opal driver. But the man who's really going to benefit is Joe Binkelock. Aiello has pulled off. That means he's going to get no chances. It's a great disappointment for the young Frenchman as he walks away. But Binkelock it is, who will now close to within 30 points of Aiello and take the championship for the final races at the Nürburgring. They're into the stadium section, breaking for the hairpin. There's Aiello's car. There's a disconsolate Frenchman wandering away. He's watching Binkelock go away and take a famous, famous victory here at La. Ahead of his teammate, Johnny Chicotto. Look at the BMW people straining over the wall. The flag has fallen. It is victory for Joe Binkelock, a famous one that puts him within 30 points of Laurent Aiello in the series. Great, great victory then. Great celebrations in the BMW camp. Who could have foreseen, after all of their problems in practice, that they would be taking the laurels this weekend. And there's the top three on the screen. There's a really sad Frenchman wandering away. He must wonder what has actually happened to him this time around. The results then. Winklock then from Chicotto, from Alton, Muller, Team, and Bartles in the top six. Yeah, but the real winner today was Johnny Chicotto and uh, Christian Mendes because without uh, the help from them, I... I could not win the race, you know. The first 10 laps was not easy, but it was in, uh, was really possible to follow Johnny. But after when I passed Johnny, when he let me pass, I had really a lot of problems with the tire, understeer, oversteer, and so. In the middle of the race, I was no more confident, you know. But still, behind me was uh, Christian Mentel, and he did a really great job. Thanks to Christian, and of course, thanks a lot to the team and Johnny Chekwato. So the driver's point, Aiello on 6.06, Winklock now on 5.76, and what a drive from Johnny Ciccotto in third place. Great result for him. Yeah, that's right. I had a push from uh, Aiello, which I didn't expect. Uh, I don't know why he was trying to ha so hard, because uh, it was not good for him, finally. But, uh, okay, for me it was quite good. It was uh, a good day. The car was fantastic, and I could have won uh, easy both races. Uh, I had to help Joe and I'm quite happy that man uh, he managed to win and uh, everything is quite open for Nürburgring. Disappointment then for Laurent Aiello. Peugeot didn't bring champagne here and in the end, against the odds, it seems they were right not to. It means that the championship will go to the final race weekend at the Nürburgring and with 30 points between the two contenders, the stakes are as follows. If 